Experiments may also be conducted in field settings. And if you can take yourselves to one corner of the room, so you just spread out a bit as groups, and I'll come around and explain what I want each group to do. In okay. Daisy's study, what we've chosen to do consciously is to design a study as much as we could that is close to uh, practice, close to the kind of thing that these athletes would be doing in their normal everyday activities. So we try to design as much as we could an ecologically valid study. What I want you to do is imagine that you're going to produce a plan for a video for a group of athletes, and that's you three together. The work that Daisy does is also nicely bringing together some of the interests that Tom and I have been working on for a little while, which is really <laughs> how people perceive themselves as a member of a group, or whether they perceive themselves as an individual, and how that affects their relationship to the group. In this particular uh, situation, we're looking at performance. Uh, when you think of yourself as an individual in a particular context, but at the same time performance occurs in a group setting, how does that affect um, performance of the group as a whole? The aim is to find out how to make groups more effective. So how you can get people to, in my case, win more Olympic medals, win more medals at World Championships. Um, but it's applicable to all groups, So because groups are in every sphere of life, it's how you make those groups more effective. Yeah, and this is the, the final um, finding, which just shows that group identity influences performance. And what she found was that when people... when not only their, their group identity is being acknowledged, but also their individuality within that, that performance was much higher than in the other two conditions, the conditions where people were either only told... Um, think of yourself as an individual, or the condition where people were told, think of yourself as part of a team. Yeah, and the best performance is in the group where we combine um, personal identity and social identity. And this is the, the kind of field experiment that Daisy has done is um, still quite experimental, quite interventionist, so the task is still somewhat artificial. I think the issue of artificiality is, is an important one to address, OK? I think traditionally people have the view, oh, experiments, they take place in this very rarefied situation that has no bearing on what goes on in the world at large. So you've got experimental situations, then you've got the real world. The first thing I want to say is that experiments are part of the real world. A bit like, say, a dinner party. Okay, If you have a dinner party, it's a constrained situation. But that doesn't mean that what goes on there doesn't give you important insights into people's behaviour. It does. You've set it up in a particular way to look at or investigate particular kinds of issues. I think the, the standard or the typical research method for the experiment of social psychology is the experiment, as the sort of name suggests. But I think the point is that if you're interested in the relationship between variables in the world, then actually the, there's two things. You can use lots of different methodologies, and you can also conduct that research in different sort of locations. For example, there's, there's survey research, where again, you can manipulate variables, you can measure them in those kinds of ways. There's also case study research, where again, you can um, look at a particular case with a view to getting a particular handle on a particular phenomenon. The point there too is they can have qualitative as well as quantitative measures that you're interested in. The strength of social psychology as a whole is that you have an array of methodologies at your disposal and that's true particularly I think of experimental research and again the challenge is to find the methodology that suits or is adapted to the question that you're answering. So I think you should always start from the question and say what's the methodology that's appropriate rather than slip into what you might call methodolatry, where you say, I'm an experimentalist and all I do is experiments. For me personally, the value of experimentation is not intrinsic to the methods. And there's nothing sacred about experimentation or the results it yields. But I think it makes uh, uh, a forceful uh, impact when you're communicating the results of your research. So in the case of performance, for example, being able to say to other researchers or to end users, to, to companies, that the performance in one condition was 30% higher in one condition. That kind of thing is something that people want to know about. It's something that people think is valuable. You can see examples of ways in which social psychological inquiry, experimental social psychology work in, in particular, has been used to understand social behaviour at large. And I think the, a lot of the core questions that we ask as we go about our everyday lives, about issues of social conflict, social cooperation, of helping 
of, uh, of obedience, of influence. All these big kind of issues, I think, are there. They're spoken to by social psychology in kind of very big, very direct ways. So I think when you're asking big questions about, if you like, large-scale human behaviours, turn on the news. What's on the news today? Extremism, influence, conformity, citizenship, um, all of those kinds of issues. The, the issues that really concern us as people as human beings, those are, I think, r routinely questions to which social psychology f provides, firstly, in answers, but secondly, I think, unique answers, important answers, relevant answers.